Hello students, do you know what is the super hexagon? Does it really help us to remember all the trigonometric formulae and identities we have seen so far? Yes, it does. It's a simple hexagon which looks like this. All we need to do is to join all the opposite vertices and that gives us three diagonals. We write the number one in the center. It's still difficult to believe that one hexagon can lead us to so many formulae. To know the formulae, we give the six function names to each of the six vertices. There is a particular way in which we need to write it. We start writing from this vertex. We go around the hexagon and end at this vertex. Simple. Now, let's see how we write the six functions at the six vertices. You just need to remember the one formula which we have already seen. Tan is equal to sine upon cos. We have used this formula like many many times now. Tan is equal to sine by cos. We start at this vertex and write tan, sine, cos in the clockwise direction. Now three vertices and three functions remain. We write cot opposite to tan. What remains is cosec and sec. If we draw a vertical line through the center of the hexagon, we will have three vertices on the left and three on the right. So to remember what's written on this vertex, just remember that we have all three functions starting with C on the right side. So we write cosec here and what remains is sec. We write on the left side. That's all you need to remember about how the super hexagon has to be drawn. So let's draw the super hexagon on the next page. Now, you are going to learn the whole set of trigonometric formulae. To understand the first set of formulae, let us try and go around the hexagon in the clockwise direction. We go like this. This tells us that tan theta is equal to sin theta by cos theta. That's how we started. Now, let's see the next three functions in the clockwise direction. First one equals second one by the third one. So these three functions tell us sin theta is equal to cos theta by cot theta. Take the next three functions clockwise, first equals second by the third. Hence, cos theta equals cot theta by cosec theta. And if we take the next three functions, we can say cot theta equals cosec theta by sec theta. We can get the two more formulae if we go the similar way. Cosec theta is equal to sec theta by tan theta. And sec theta is equal to tan theta by sin theta. Isn't that simple? One hexagon and six formulae without any effort. Great! What if you forget if you had to go clockwise and you go anti-clockwise instead? Let's say you started like this, in the anti-clockwise direction. Don't worry, the pattern still remains the same. First equals second by third, that is tan theta equals sec theta by cosec theta. If we take these three, then sin theta equals tan theta by sec theta. And if we take these three, then cos theta equals sin theta by tan theta. And the list goes on, whether you go clockwise or anticlockwise. First will always equal second by third. You can easily get three more formulae here. One simple hexagon and 12 formulae. Is that all? No, there's more to learn. We draw a super hexagon with one at the center. In the previous set of formulae, we did not use the one which was written at the center. Let's see why it is placed like this. If we multiply the function at the opposite vertices, we get a one like sin theta multiplied by cosec theta equals 1. Cos theta multiplied by sec theta equals 1. Tan theta multiplied by cot theta equals 1. So, if the function at the diagonally opposite vertices are multiplied, we get a 1. Great! There is more to learn. Let's draw a super hexagon once again. Focus on the functions at the diagonally opposite vertices, sine and cosec, 
cos and sec, cot and tan. They are reciprocals of each other. Look at this arrow for instance. This arrow tells us that sin theta equals 1 by cos sec theta. And this arrow tells us that cos theta equals 1 by sec theta. And this arrow tells us that cot theta equals 1 by tan theta. If the arrow is drawn like this, we can even say cosec theta equals 1 by sin theta. So remember, functions at diagonally opposite vertices are reciprocals of each other. It doesn't end here. Let's draw the superhexagon once again in the same pattern. Do you remember complementary angles? Two angles are complementary if their sum equals 90 degree. And trigonometric functions had a special relation with complementary angles. In this arrow, what does it tell us about sine and cos? It tells us that sine of theta equals cos of 90 degree minus theta. Similarly, this arrow tells us that tan of theta equals cot of 90 degree minus theta. And this arrow tells us sec of theta equals cosec of 90 degree minus theta. And if the arrow is drawn this way, it will tell us that cos of theta equals sine of 90 degree minus theta. So, a horizontal arrow tells us that the one function of an angle is equal to the other function of its complementary angles. I request you to be patient. I have lots more to share. Let's draw a super hexagon once again. Look at the figure. There are six triangles formed inside. Focus on three. This one, this one, and this one. So here we go clockwise within each of the triangles starting with top left position like this. Sine, cos, and one. This gives us very important identity. This square plus this square equals this square. That means sine square theta plus cos square theta equal to 1. Now go clockwise in this triangle. This square plus this square equals this square. That means 1 plus cot square theta equal to cosec square theta. If we go clockwise in this triangle, we get tan square theta plus 1 equal to sec square theta. Amazing, isn't it? Now you know why we call it super hexagon. One hexagon has helped us with so many formulae in trigonometry. Hang on, you have to practice this procedure well because there are a few things that you have to remember here too. First is position of the functions, direction of the arrows and so on. Remember, memorizing formulae can never be the solution. Make sure you apply all these formulae in your regular sums practice. That's all for now. Bye-bye.